belief in the film is a critical factor, certainly for the actors, but also for everyone who's at a creative level. There's something also about guerrilla filmmaking where people just love the energy of it, and they love to have a film that they do believe in, that they can throw themselves into. I always thought that Terminator 1, it was, it's a wonderful life with guns. Meeting Jim, seeing his artwork, seeing the endoskeleton, reading the script, slam dunk, not a question, this was going to be a memorable movie. This, this is going to be a great movie if this is if this script, we got to get this movie. Everyone else around me say, maybe you should not play a villain. That is not good for your career. I think the love story is what really made it work um, for the audiences. We did everything you can imagine in terms of guerrilla filmmaking to pull the, the movie off. Nights, rats, alleys, fast moving cars. So I set off the rest of the charges. We put it out and there was a, a collective groan amongst everybody on the set. I actually, I felt a sense of fear as to, hmm, can I do this? Can I cut a picture that's this complex? It's the feeling of, of Terminator. We've got to keep going. He's after us. He's, the schedule is after us. Initially, we were supposed to film in the summer of 1983, and we were going to film in Toronto, Canada. I spent a significant amount of time up there identifying locations, negotiating with, with uh, you know, city officials and so on about what roads we could have and you know, what access we could have, what closures we could have. Uh, and, you know, chopping our way with a machete through that red tape. Unfortunately, Dino De Laurentiis decided to preempt Arnold to star in the sequel to Conan the Barbarian. And Dino wouldn't let you out to, to do right. Terminator first. Well, because he read the script and he said to himself, wait a minute, they're trying to steal my star away. Right. And he knew it was a great script and he right. told me that. And we had to shift our shooting schedule to spring, March, 1984 in Los Angeles. We wound up in a, in a one-year holding pattern uh, during which I practically starved to death. You know, my mom was sending me coupons in the mail that allowed me to buy two Big Macs for the price of one so that I could survive and then I'd get two and I'd have one one day and one the next day. So, and using, you know, cost-saving techniques like this, which proved beneficial once we actually started making the film, I was able to survive long enough to begin production that everyone was willing and quite happy to put the film on hold until March. I was fairly new to that process, so it was exciting to me, and I was just totally focused on the whole process. Oh, necessity's a mother, as they say. I mean, he wants to do basically everything because he has so, such a clear vision of he wants to, what he wants to see. Jim's like explaining the, the blue screen camera to the guys and what they should be doing. I mean, these guys are in special effects all their lives. And Jim's saying, oh, no, 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 you can't. Oh, are oh, you having trouble? Oh, this is how you fix that. And he understood. I mean, you could talk about things, how to do them, what you wanted to do. Jim understands that the technology is there to serve him. He did that with everybody. Camera, sound, I mean, he knows everybody's job better than they do. And, and he's better at it than they are. And I think sometimes he gets frustrated because of that. He's a control freak, basically. It's just his style. I'm back in my element. I'm back on my grind. This is irrelevant. All that matters is the climb. I'm such a perfectionist. So everything gotta be right. Just setting a precedent. This right here's a testament to my sacrifice. Back in my element. I'm back in my, back in my element. I'll be back.